everybody and welcome back to the Sideline Night Podcast. You're welcome to our preview show and we're looking ahead to a massive weekend of senior and intermediate championship action. I'm glad to be joined by Stephen Cusick and he's going to help me go through all the senior games, the two semi-finals and later on we'll hear from Barry Shannon and he's going to talk us through the two intermediate games. So Stephen, with two double headers on Saturday and Sunday, first up it's the Oaks and Cully Hanna. On Saturday, followed by Mod, or sorry, followed by Clan Earn and Clan McGill. So that's where we'll start for the senior semi finals. This is a, a massive game, a massive Flergan Derby. We don't have to build this up at all. Stephen, I think uh, the tickets will sell themselves for this one. This is a, a big rivalry, but while they're right beside each other, probably don't play a lot well the football because they don't play each other that often. No, it's just, it's um it's one of those together two massive clubs in Lurgan that have kind of maybe sidestepped each other the last maybe fifteen, twenty, twenty five years, especially at senior level. Um when I was growing up, um Clan would have been one of the bigger teams about competing for championships, winning senior championships, but um just unfortunately for them they had to take a bit of time just to rebuild and they're back in the seniors now competing. Clan Iron was probably the same, just fell away. And um, when clans were intermediate, Clan Iron or Clan Irons were senior, and this kind of sized at each other. But massive game this weekend for both clubs, and it's probably been a long time waiting for the two clubs. They're probably jumping out a bit, um, exciting about this game moving forward. Um, just in the last league game, I'll send you before we come on there, we played Clan Iron down in Murray. And after, I was just talking to a few of the clans boys, and they were just asking about clan and how, what way are they play against they got there. And even even that just suggests that they hadn't played each other at all. So they were like chopping at the bit, maybe hopefully get them in the championship later down the year. So they've got their wish. Yeah, that's that's the, that's the thing here because the rivalry and everything, clan are the favourites. They've been a lot of people's favourites. I've been saying that all year. That they're a lot of people's favourites to win the championship. But that rivalry thing and, and everything that comes along with it, Clan are going to have absolutely no fear of Clan Iron here. They're going to respect them and know their their abilities and we'll, we'll go through, obviously, matchups and stuff like that. But Clan is going in here confident that they can they can cause an upset. Yeah, and they have to go in confident because if they go in with any um, question marks at all over like, are we good enough to compete with Clan Iron that is, like, they're going to they're going to get well, they're going to get better to get to there. So they have to go in here believing that they're on a par with Clan Iron. Um, and looking to maybe because Clan Iron won that championship two years ago, that maybe they're here, they've had their success, we want our success here. So they'll definitely going into this game full of confidence and hopefully they'll make a, a very tight game the whole way to the end, the final whistle. Because if Clan Iron stand off Clan Iron at all from minute one here, we all know how good Clan Iron are. They've won their championship two years ago, as I said, there. Um, they have a very, very strong squad. so if there's any standoff, I told them this much by Clan and Gale, Clan Iron will pick them off and they'll find it pretty easy, I'm, I'm sure, if they're left play. I think the one thing that stands out to me for both teams, I think, Stephen, is pace. Like, there's just pace all over the field. Mm-hmm. And as I mentioned, we're going to go through our matchups too. But um, I suppose pace and what really stood out for the Clan and Gale game against Kaleve in the quarterfinal was their veracity around the middle of the field and their work rate. And I know myself and Mark had talked about it in our review show after that game that, you know, Shane Parton is probably one of the best forwards in the county at the minute. He's, I think he's the top scorer in the senior championship. But he was leading the charge in terms of tackling, in terms of work rate. So th- that middle eight is just going to be a war zone this week, isn't it? It is. Two very young sides. Um, so there's no reason why this it shouldn't be a high intensity from one minute to the 60th minute here. Um you mentioned Shane there. Shane has been the most outstanding player in the championship this year um, across the board. He's put up maybe four thirty or something in whatever five games or four games, whatever it is. That's serious scoring. Um, you mentioned it against Cleve. The aggression levels that uh, probably got the over the line against Cleve was just around the middle. That Shea McGill was kicking the ball long and it was just a battle around the middle and Clan Gale just bullied Cleve off the park. Probably going to have to do something similar on Saturday night here. Um, rivalry aside, not out there. Still a game of football between two teams trying to win a match. Um, so probably need to park um, the Lurgan Derby or that guy and just play the game as it is. They're going to need to make a midfield battle. Um, if Clan Earn uh, get that ball out easy from the kickouts, 
and that clan iron or that clan clan of yell that clan iron come on them. It's going to be a long night, so they're going to need to press them high, force it out long, and did the exact same thing they do against Cleve. Just make it a battle in there, a battle for every ball, and never wins breaking ball here. I think we go a long way to winning this match. I think that that's. I think we're going to expect that from Clan de Gilles, aren't we? Because it worked so well the last day against Cleve. They have the bodies, they have the big men in round up, they have the likes of Callum O'Neill in there to win a break. So I think we're, we're expecting Clan de Gilles to really push up on Clan Arms kickouts and, and make this a real battle. Yeah, I, I think that's Clan de Gilles probably strength um, because they have a lot of nippy B forwards in there who can mark their men no problem, can tag them on to that kickouts away. And then as soon as that ball goes over their head, they're in for the breaks. Um, just before we come on, we we'll reference um, Mohri played Clanagale last league game. Clanagale gave us a kick out up and let us come on to them. And we were just picking them off for fun. I think we were maybe eight to nine points clear. Clanagale just flicked the switch for about 20 minutes left, pressed us, and we found very hard to get out. Um, just put Shane in the middle of the pitch and he was catching everything. Uh, we couldn't get out at all. The full, full press. And it was just a totally different team. So, what team's going to show up on Saturday night? Are they going to respect Clan Earn and give them the kick out? Or are they going to press them high and let, let them play on their terms, force them long, and let Shane do what he can do in the middle? As you say, they have a lot of ways to be players. And they've Callum O'Neill, there's a wee boy Lavery in there. Michael in there is very good at organising. And then, I say, if Shane in there, the ball goes up in, that, in the air, you fully expect Shane and my partner to come out of it. We're going to go through our, our match ups. Um, we've mentioned Shane a couple of times there, so we, I suppose we'll start mm-hmm. with him. Um, there's probably two or three options here. Um, you have obviously Tane and Kelly in the middle of the field. Are they going to go hammer, hammer the hammer with T- TK? Are they going to put Connor McConville maybe on him? Um, Connor obviously in around the middle of the field there. Or I was just remembering in, in 2021, um, I remember me and Peter Nugent was doing the preview show. I'm talking about matchups, and we had talked about TK or Conor McConville for Ryan, and the next thing it was Sean McCarthy. So that's possibly another option just that the yeah. guys we could take out of the bag. But who do you see lined up against Shane? The thing is, we're, you're mentioning players there, like you're mentioning they're all good players. Um, all players will probably need to be taken care of individually by themselves. Um, Matt Conor McConville, an excellent player, has had a great two or three seasons so far since he came into senior football. Probably ideally matched up for Shane size wise, and Connor does feel a few balls in midfield himself there. Um, great target man for the keeper. Um, that ball's put up in the middle between Connor and Shane. It'll be a great battle for, to watch for 60 minutes. Um, it'll be interesting to see who comes out here. Wouldn't be much in them, but with the form of the year, Shane for me uh, would probably get the best of most players. The year is probably just uh, trying to keep him down or maybe trying to double up on him on the kick out, trying to. Maybe get his eye line and stop him from jumping or something like that. Um, TK has an option, but probably match him for strength. Um, maybe just a wee bit stronger than Connor. But TK hasn't really played a lot of football in the year. He maybe came back the last three or four months. Um, probably won't be sharp enough, but I don't know if it would be a right to throw him in against Shane. County rivals they are. Um, good mates and all, I'm sure they are. But I think Connor would probably be a better option than you said. Um, Sean McCarthy there too but maybe Sean is better suited to Supi to keep in him um, follow him about the pitch Sean's a very good marker done an excellent job in rain the 21 final um, very very good man marker and plus can add a wee bit going forward so we could put maybe Supi on the back foot um, even Kimmeridge in there too um, like, there's no shortage of men here to pick these men up here um, if, if McKimbridge picks up Supi that makes McCarthy free to mark there and then you you have a lot of good players back there to mark these men. There's no short. And then even for a wee tolling in there, um, for Slana Gale, they, they're all wee nippy players. And they can all hurt you if they're not picked up. So there's a, definitely a lot of battles here. It'll be interesting to see when the ball's threw up, say who goes to who and who both managers have uh, set aside for man working jobs here. I think that the Supi one is really interesting too because yeah, I, I hope it's Barry, Barry McCambridge. I want to see them two going at it. Yeah. But as we said, it, it could be McCarthy. You know, Supi could go inside maybe and it's, yeah. it's one of the fullbacks. Maybe McCambridge has to go in with him because that's where Supi started against Cleve. I was trying it to work is. out the matchups and he started inside and Karen Kenny had to pick him up and he can drift out as well. So 
the, the picking up speed could be somebody like McCambridge because no matter where Subi goes, McCambridge is comfortable enough to go in and out. Yeah. And that could be a good tactic for Clannagale if Subi does start in full forward and McCambridge does pick him up. What's the best thing Clannagale can do? Maybe take McCambridge out of there. So let Subi roam about the pitch like he maybe did against Clevey there for after about 10, 15 minutes. So that's another tactic there that Clannagale can maybe exploit. If you want to get your best uh, defender out of there, put Subi in there, take him out, and McCambridge take him out of the field. And maybe that gives Tolan and maybe Nippy players in there a bit more freedom to win the ball, you know, if, if Clannagill are going to be that bit more direct. So it'll definitely be interesting before the boss threw up on Saturday night to see just who takes who up on like, the other end of the pitch. You've Turbo up there. Um, if not the best, definitely one of the top two, three player forwards in the county. Um, didn't have his best game against Silverbridge, but still walked away with maybe 1-2 and probably won in the game with that goal. Just the high ball in, he fought for it, and he got his just rewards at the end. Um, I actually actually was writing down a couple of notes for the, the day, just from this here, and I was like, if we were playing um, Clanner uh, this weekend, we would definitely have to put a sweeper in. And I'm looking at the Clanner Gale team there, and I'm looking through there, just um, experience and have a lot of youth in there and probably looking at maybe Sean Mackle, one of the leaders in that team. Um, actually started the last game at half forward against Clevey, got that goal because he can just he can play, he's a very good player, smart player, he can play anywhere in the pitch. But for this game on uh, Saturday night, to keep Turbo and keep the a bit of space in front of him, I think he'd be the ideal man just to sweep in front of um Turbo. And if he just in the ball, he can he can build from the this tax from the back there. So It'll be interesting to see where the play Sean Michael on uh, Saturday night because I definitely think he's going to have a big part to maybe stop the ball going in the turbo or just sitting in front of him. And how important is that, Stephen? Because I think just basing it on the Clevey game, Sam McLaren will come out to mark um, Kieran Holland. So I'm just guessing he's, he's wore, I think he wears number three. Yeah. So I'm assuming he'll start on Connor Turbot, possibly Michael in front of him. But how important is is the work rate out the field to make sure that the ball doesn't become an end of turbo? Because once he has it, well, it's, it's nearly game over at that stage. Yeah, it is, and that's that's the key. And um, what you just said there, uh, even if you even if you do have a sweeper in front of these players, athletic ground is a very big pitch. There's a lot of space there. It's hard for a sweeper to cover both sides unless you have two or three in there, you know. But um, the work rate out the middle, getting um, if it's for. Clan Iron getting TK's head down, Connor McCampbell's head down, um, Aidan McConville, Jack Hall, all these guys are like you can you can name ten of them here. Like out the middle here. It's it's getting there, uh, getting pressure on the ball, making sure they don't get their head up to look at Turbo's runs. So the pressure out in that middle between the two fifties to stop the early ball coming in is vital here. So if Clan Gale set up, um maybe with a sweeper or maybe with maybe two in there on the rest pressing, fighting, working their just working their asses off basically. They just need to get the bite's heads down and not let Clanner and come on them. Because I'd fear for I'd fear for most teams in the county if they give Clanner and the ball and let them run at them because they're very, very they're all good footballers. They're very strong in the ball, they're very pacey and a lot of energy. So there's no the probably the energy levels throughout the game won't come down, I say from minute one to sixty. And with their men coming off and on, like for like, it'll be very hard for Clan Gale to keep these bays if they don't press him, you know what I mean? So don't give Clanner any more energy than they need. I think their bench is huge too, isn't it, Stephen? Because I know just talking to you off earlier, we're going through four or five of the names that would get on probably mm. every other senior team in the county. And they probably do have the best squad in the county. I think that's a, a general, um, everybody sort of thinks that. But like the likes of Aidan McConville, come on, got two points against Silverbridge, Ren Meehan, come on. Um, Michal O'Shea, I think Clan Earner are very happy with his progress and he's one for the future. The likes of Ryan Owens, I don't think, hasn't played the last couple of games. So there's there's a lot of players in that bank that can come in and make an impact. Yeah, it's it's um they've definitely got the strongest squad in the county, there's no, no doubt about it. Um, I don't think anyone comes close. Um Clan Gale maybe in about five years time can match that squad, but at the minute Clan Irons, just need going through the players there that's not has been playing. Mehan come on against um, Silverbridge, had a very good game, very good footballer. Um, give him time in the ball, he'll hurt you. Aidan McConville, excellent player when, when they won the championship, he was brilliant, so he was had a great year. 
Um, Conlon did himself the last day, came on. Uh, Dan McCarthy, these boys here, like it's just it's name after name, strength and numbers. And um, if this is a hand intensity game, you are you're going to need your bench. Um, you're letting make face some six subs here, so definitely uh, Rory will run the bench. He's going to need to run the bench, and that's a serious strength and depth there coming off that bench here to win your game. But this game's coming down to the coming down last 10 15 minutes here, and then players are coming off the bench fresh. For Sean Earn. I know I like to have my money on because it's a serious talent coming out of the bench here, you know. When Clan Gale at this present moment of time just wouldn't have the same caliber of players as that coming off the bench. I think everybody in the county is looking forward to this one, and I'm sure Lurgan is, is buzzing at the minute. But who do you see coming through with Stephen? There's there's a, a big chance here, I'm sure Clan Gale are thinking to get through to a final for the first time, I think from 2006. And Clan Iron there, obviously, trying to get their hands back on the Jerry Fagan. So, how do you see this one falling out? Um, I'll go back to the start at the start there. If Clan Gael press them high and force them long out to the middle of the field, it'll definitely make it a game. And there'll be nothing in this game coming down to the last 10 minutes, I think. And with Clan Iron's bench... I think the bench will get them over the line because we mentioned four or five names coming out of the bench there who are all all forwards, who all can hurt you and all pacey. Um, if Clannie Gale stood off them, I think Clannie will win regardless. I'm just, I'm trying to give maybe, if, if, if it goes that way, there'll be two, three points in it. If Clannie Gale stood off them and let Clannie dictate this game early from minute one, Clannie can maybe run out and maybe face six points winners here. But I think Clan Iron, just, just to where they're at at the minute, they're very, very strong. I don't really think they've maybe hit top form yet and maybe Saturday night they will. But I just think maybe this is just maybe one, two years too early for Clans. But this Clan Gill team, um, they're probably going to be here for a while. So they are. And I just think it's maybe one year too early. So I'm going to go with Clan Iron. Yeah, I total agreement. Well, I think Clans are eventually... Gonna, they're going to get that final at some stage and I'm sure they're going to win one over the next whatever five or six years but I think Clan Iron just the, they're too strong for them at the minute and particularly with that bench I think it's just such a, yeah. a big game winner like, so I think we'll both go with Clan Iron there um, to get through on Saturday night on Sunday then we have an odd double header in the athletic rounds it's Katie and St Paul's first in the intermediate semi-final and then it's Madden and Cross McLean at five o'clock to win time on Sunday so <laughs> Another big game here, um, Stephen, and we were saying about, I just said about clans, that it's a huge opportunity for them to get their county final. Madden's thinking the same here. They've only ever been to one county final in 1998, cross beat them. So they're looking, they're, they've got over this, the hurdle of the quarter final, which was sort of a stumbling point for years for them, but they're through the semi final now and they'll be full of confidence taking on cross. Yeah, massive opportunity for Madden here. Um... I just hope they realise how big an opportunity it is for them. Um, I've written down here beside Madden belief. I think that's massive. Is uh, Madden going on Sunday actually think they can beat Cross? If they do, and they, they most definitely can beat them, um, there's no reason why they can't go out and just play like they did against Balogun Alvin the last round. Madden have serious pace in this team here. They, they, they're going through Clan Orange forward lane. Um, Madden has a serious forward lane too. It's middle eight too. to their half back line. Um, very pacey, very strong. Energy levels are high from minute one to sixty. Um, but this this game can go either two ways. It can if Madden think they can win this game, they will win it. If they go out and they stand off cross like most teams do, cross will just get that out final like they do most years. It's, it's one of those ones. It's 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 a hard game. You know, after about 15, 20 minutes away, this game's gonna go. Um, Cross McLean, they they just they do what they do in the championship. They've been caught a couple of times in quarter finals for re, uh, for replays or extra time, but they always seem to come through it. Um, it's maybe one time a year where everybody says Cross had their bad game. They did it last year against um, Drum and T, and then they go out and they beat us by fifteen points in the semi-final and then they go out and be a great more by 10 or 12 in the final so um, I wouldn't look too much into the Harps, the Harps game about they just had to get over a line Silverbridge 
it's a very tight pitch. Um, the conditions weren't great that night. Cross did what they had to do. They got over the line, and at the end of the day, they won, and they're in the semi-final. So it's it's one of those ones. It's what Madden are going to show up. If Madden show up with belief, there's no reason why they can't make a county final. If they show up and stand off Cross and give them too much respect, like most teams do, Cross will just, just walk over them. They'll just walk over them like they do most teams and they get that thing. That belief, Steve, how hard is that to, to come up? Because I know you've beat Cross, obviously, in, in 2020 and a couple of times before that in the championship. I'm just thinking of this modern team, this modern team won under 19 championship. Um, two or three years ago, beating Cross in the final, the likes of Dar McMullen, Shea Valley, Paddy Kiar, um, all played in that team. So there is there is players in this modern team that have beat Cross in a championship final, which might feed in belief. But how, how difficult is that to, to get through your team coming up against Cross in the championship? It's you just you just need to put a bullseye on them. That's that's the way we looked at it. You just need to you respect what Cross did and. They're the template for any team in Armagh over the last 20, 30 years. Um, but you have to you have to park that respect when you go onto the pitch. At the end of the day, they're just another team. Um, they're standing your way. And you just have to push them out of the way. You bully them out of the way. You get in their faces because they're going to get in your face. Madden, <laughs> Madden a few big men in that team that maybe need to put their mark on Cross early. Um, we're talking about Cross... How has how Cross been beat over the last five, six years? Cross been beat over the last five. They're conceded serious goals. Um, the high ball going in the cross has, has been hunting them from 2016 um, since Maliki Macken scored that uh, last goal in the semi final. They haven't recovered from that. The four or five keepers from that there who are all wouldn't fill you with too much confidence. Um, us in 2017. Couple of goals from high balls in the both games. Clan Earn, 21. You see the high ball come in, bounced, and Tiernan didn't know what to do with it. So, like, Harps game there a couple of weeks ago, it's it just, it's a, there's a wee bit of a pattern forming here. And I'm sure Madden looking at that there, they're going to have to exploit that. Um, and even if they don't exploit it, they have to test here and there early. Um, putting Al Grimley in there. Work him in and out, a few high balls in, see what happens. And him going in, Cross will retreat a wee bit and look at the players that Madden have. They retreat, look at the players that Madden have coming forward. The Nell Smith, Levi Valley, um, Sheridan, McMullen, O'Hara, Rowery, McKenna. Like these are serious footballers with plenty of pace who can all take a score from 20, 30 yards. So it's it's a tactic that they need to use, but not like if you look to the Harps and Cross game in extra time, Harps kept kicking the ball and in extra time, relentlessly, 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 where if they would have picked a couple of scores, where if they would have maybe every second ball hit or every third ball, they would have got a couple of points, you know? So they need to just maybe make sure that they don't go full 100% high ball in. They need to just do what they did against your uh, bottom in the last round, do what they've been doing, run at teams, because their biggest strength is their pace. Um, their biggest pace coming like now, Smith, had an excellent season. Is very I, I rate him very highly. His energy levels he got him down, up and down the pitch are, are frightening. He always seems to be in the end of the play, no matter if he starts the ball and corner back. He always seems to be in the end of the ball. So um, he need he would need watch by Cross McLean on on Sunday night because if they, if they let these players Cross McLean let these players run with the ball, um, Madden will find scores at the end of the pitch because as I've mentioned already, there's a lot of a lot of talent up there. Connor Grimley who has scored. A lot to share in the championship. Now being back in there is a great asset. To, um, Madden will fill that team with confidence because he, he's a big leader in that side. So there's a lot of firepower there for Madden um, on Sunday night. Just on now, Grimley, he uh, went into the to score against Bally McNabb. So that is a tactic that, you know, it's not going to be a surprise to cross. They're going to be aware of that. No. But can, can Madden afford to put him in there, Stephen, and maybe lose his influence yeah. around the middle of the field? Like, with he will go on our matchup shortly, but he probably been matched up against either Morris or O'Neill. Can you take yeah. him out of there and put him in full forward? It's it's a bit of a it's a it's a dilemma. Yeah, it's probably Robin Peter to pay Paul in that it's, it's one of those ones. He's definitely gonna to have to go in there at some stage of the game. I know what you're saying it, he's definitely at Morris and you've ran out in the middle of the field who needs looked after. But Paddy Kyar 
having a great season for Madden. Very, very impressive against Balagnell the last day. Um, great feeler of a ball and loves going forward too. Um, would Rain be maybe a wee bit more experienced, too strong for him? Um, would you need an ally out the field just to maybe look after Rain? It's one of the, I think, put him in for five minutes, take him out, and um, he hasn't played a lot of football the year, so he might need to go in there for five minutes and get a bit of a braver to come out again. Um, but he definitely has to end up at full forward in the first five, ten minutes of the game, just to, just to put questions across the end to see here. We're going to throw a few high balls in here just to see how it here. Um, like, no high balls going against Cross on Sunday. The whole crowd will be going, Jesus, why did I kick a ball in, you know? So they'll have to expect a few high balls in. They'll be working relentlessly in that there. Rico Kelly back playing for them. Rico played full back for Cross for a few years, but he seems to be playing out the pitch a bit more, so... Maybe he's the man to go in there and put a job, uh, do a job in Nal or whoever ends up in full forward. But um, it's definitely a tactic I would have to, he would have to go from looking at the Harps game and previous games that I've mentioned there. Yeah, I think that's an excellent one, actually. Um, Stephen, I forgot about Rico actually being back. Yeah. He's, he's obviously an experienced defender. Um, he's played everywhere for Cross, really, but he's maybe the man that will end up going back in there. With Morris coming back into the team, it it frees up a midfield slot. So I suppose on our matchups, um, the thing about playing cross probably that they have so many danger men. You have Kane McCombin, yeah. Jamie Clark, who I haven't even mentioned the two Neils, Morris. Mm. Like they, they have a lot of talent. Um, in their teams, yeah. very hard to match up against them. It is. Um, it's hard. You mentioned there, and then you have Fitzpatrick, who's an excellent player. Um. Mine last year, uh, obviously, starting within respecting. It's just that maybe have had the players to put on them, and he destroyed us. Um, caught everything in midfield. We were more wider about not letting Rain catch the ball, and just felt like caught everything. Um, Donald Robbery had an excellent game um, against yourself, sir, in the last round, uh, Mark and Rory. Um, he'll definitely be doing a job, but who's he going to be doing a job on? <laughs> Is it Jamie at uh, centre half forward, who definitely needs picked up? If Kane, um, Kane maybe have not having the best of years, um, maybe the, not getting the football in the county all year, maybe just is helping back a wee bit. But these running games in the championship will bring him on, and you can just see last year in the championship from the semi final stage onwards, he just stopped his game. So maybe that'll happen this year again. Um, but like, Martin do have a very strong defence. Um, they're not conceding the big pay. Maybe an average, maybe ten a game so far. Um, if they keep cross to 10 points on Sunday, they'll, they'll win the game. Um, it's, it's hard to know. It's hard to match up the modern players to the cross players because the cross players are household names. You have Clark, you have the two O'Neill brothers, you have Comiskey in there, you can like, you can't want to mark them all because you have to go and win the game yourself. You want to mark all these players. Other players cross will just feed in and they'll, they'll take their place. So you have to pinpoint a couple and you have to go on the offensive against Cross. You just can't sit in and wait for them coming. So they'll maybe pick up, they definitely have to pick up Kane and Clark. 100% of the pick them up. Oshin and Rain would more or less play out the field a wee bit and take five minutes in a full forward and come out. So if they win the full forward, you pick them up. But out the field, there's enough players around there to pick them up, you know what I mean, getting their face out there. So I'd say Madden will pinpoint Clark and Kane, and the rest of them will just be. Whoever has him out the middle has him. On the cross man working, um, the modern boys, I definitely think Nell Smith has been picked up. Um, I, I can't speak highly enough of him, the way he's been playing. Um, getting up and down the pitch, it's been frightening. Like, I can't, if you put a clock on him and not their uh, Bobby Nab game, he was getting ball in the corner back line and within 10, 15 seconds. He was up at the far end of the edge of a move, you know. And maybe a wee bit more composure in the modern team. He could have been right at the end of the attacks, giving goals. Um, we're talking about it before we came on there, but maybe Madden's not maybe scoring a big pile. Um, they haven't really won it. Um, maybe like 11, 12 points per match. That's not going to win you a championship. Um, we keep talking about the scoring track cross off. They're definitely scoring 16, 17 points in this game. Um are Madden capable of scoring that? Yeah, with the players they have. But if they put too much respect across the Glen here on the players that they have, 
and try to man mark them as I say that you have to do. They, they, they just can't respect them and man mark everybody. They have to go at them. They have to go at them and trust the forward line to go and kick 15, 16 scores as they're going to need them. Yeah, I think that, for what it's worth, I think I think gravity will go on Jamie Clark. I think he'll stay yeah. there. And possibly Ryan Morgan maybe will go in on, on Kane McConville. Another free Peter Lappin either to go out on one of the O'Neills or possibly if Ryan yeah. or Oshin drips in, he'll pick him up or he could be sweeping as well, Peter Lappin. So there's a lot to get your head around. There's a lot to talk about it as is, well. Yeah. But, yeah, they're two they're two they're two big game they're two big games this weekend and there's a lot can happen in both games here and it, it's hard looking from the outside in to see the way they're gonna go because both four teams are packed with good players, as you would expect for semi finals and championships. So it, it'll be interesting to see from the throw in what way it's gonna go. I think I've said throughout the, the duration of the championship that Cross and Clan are out in their own and there's maybe five or six teams below that, but I thought was the case with Beck back in a cross and Clannard final, and maybe that is what we're expecting. But yeah. we're expecting two really good games. Like they're going to be challenged. If, if Cross or Clannard are going to make it through, they're going to be really they're they're going yeah. to have to be tested here, aren't they? They're going to they're going to have to fight for it. Yeah, and and they would want that. Um, like, the elderly, you, you, everybody says, "Ah, oh, you're trying to buy this team, buy this team as championship. You want to play the best. You don't want to get through up to the end. Ah, oh, you didn't you avoided them like just." Mahi, for example, 2016. Like how many people showed up to us after he's never been across? You know, like it's like it never, like it never happened. You know, like kind of way. Um, so Clanner and Cross, if they avoid each other here, if say it's Cross Clans final, or, or sorry, a clan, or Clans Clanner and Madden final, people say he's never been across. They went this year, you know, Cross. From, it's just you have to beat the best, um, and you want to beat the best. So the definitely. Cross, if Cross and Clanner and get that final here, they'll have earned it this weekend because there's no way Clannagale or Clannagale are going to let Clanner and get that final without working for it and a vice versa for Madden here. They're going to be two very, very close games and hopefully right down to the wire, both of them as a spectator logging in. And call it for some Sunday, Stephen. Who do you see getting through it? It's, it's hard to see by Cross because um, the scoring threat that Madden have. It's not just getting shown on the scoreboard, and there has to be a reason for that. Um, are, they, are they not taking the right options? Are they not composed enough when they get into the final third? Um, are the Highlands on back? These questions are going to be answered on Sunday night. If Madden go out and get, I think need they need two goals, possibly three goals, just the way they're going there, they will win the game. But I think Cross are just going to be too strong for them, and I actually. I don't think Madden think they can win the game. I'm being honest. Just by talking to a couple of Madden people, I just they're, they're hesitant, they're stuttering when they're talking to them. You know what I mean? They, they wouldn't fill you full of confidence. So I think Cross and Glenn are just going to, it'll be tight to the 50th minute. And I think Cross will just run away with the end and win by three, four points. I remember in 2021 when they met in the championship, uh, I can't remember who I had on the podcast, but I remember Kippen Madden. I thought that was a, yeah. that a really good chance that time. They've obviously come on a lot in the two years yeah. from that. And I think the only thing holding me back from being confident about Madden is their scoring, that they haven't been putting up big scores. And as you said, Cross are going to score 16, 17 points here. But I think we're yeah. going to put that the line here and tip Madden. And if if I'm wrong, sure, it was obvious Cross was going to win. But if I'm right, I'm a genius. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> a win-win there. But it's a good way of it, yeah. I, I do I do think I give Martin a real fighting chance here and I give yeah. Matt McGill a real chance too. So like we should be in for two really big semi finals here. Yeah, I've got a doubt on if if Clan Gale and Martin do end up in the county final, yeah, fair play to both of them. And it's, they're not they're not big surprises. It's just um just to summarise the Clan Gale one up, I just think it's maybe a year too early, two year a year two years too early for them. Um could be wrong. We were wrong about Clanner two years ago. We thought they were maybe um, a couple of years too early and they shoved it in all their faces they win the championship. So Clanner Gill could easily do the same thing. And Madden, it's just a couple of question marks over Madden and if they answer them on Sunday night, they will win the game. But and I'll be the first to hold my hands up and say I was wrong. And I wouldn't go as far as I'd hope I'm wrong. Um, but <laughs> I just, it, it would be good to see a different team in the final other than Cross, you know, and I, 
I'm not saying I hope Madden win anything out there because they're probably winning that championship. Respect to them all that guy on, but it's great to see different teams moving forward. Just make sure our map up was stronger, you know? Yeah, big time. You know, two, two massive semi finals to look forward to in the senior championship and two massive games in the intermediate championship as well to look forward to. So we'll hear from Barry Shannon now. We'll go through the two intermediate semi finals and how we see them panning out. Stephen, great to hear from you and great to have your thoughts. Thanks very much for coming on. Cheers, Sean. Thanks. So, Barry, you're very welcome on to the podcast. We have two intermediate championship semi finals to look forward to this weekend as two double headers in the athletic rounds. Coming up first on Saturday, this kicks off the whole action for the weekend. It's Pierce Show taking on Cully Hanna. And then on Sunday, with Katie and St. Paul's as well. So, as usual, we just got through the two games as they're coming to us. So, Oves and Cully Hanna, obviously, these two teams have been uh, competing in the senior championship for. 10 years and the Oaks far longer than that so they're down into beat it now both teams they've been hungry to get back into senior football at the first time of asking and I suppose with Cullerville having won the league there's only one promotion spot left and it has to go to the championship winner so Pierce Ogan and Cully Hanna they're both probably looking to get back up to senior level Yeah I suppose they're going to use this as a springboard to get back up into the senior mix and um... I suppose anybody looking from the outside would have seen both these teams going deep in the competition based on them being playing in senior last year. Um, obviously, everybody's looking at Cully Hanna in terms of favouritism, strength and depth in their panel. Um, obviously, the three county boys, but obviously they've thrown in Nicky Murray, Tony Daly, and these boys back in the mix. So they're a really strong panel and they probably wouldn't look a mess going in the seniors this weekend either. Um, but in saying that, you know, Pierre shows went about their business quietly. Um, Probably not as many star names as in bygone years, but they still rely on the Duffys and Paul and Anto Duffy. Um, and I'm sure they'll not be far away this weekend. I suppose the, the thing about the Oaks coming into this one, Barry, they had to play a replay, obviously. They drew with the Oaks, or drew with Wolf Tone, sorry, in the quarterfinals. Had to replay that last week um, and eventually got over the line against them. But it's it's a quick turner and that's three games in three weeks. Um, maybe more actually because they had to play a playoff and all as well. So I'm not even sure if they've had a week off the whole championship. Mm -hmm. So that that can start to catch up on a team or you could look at it with good momentum coming into this game. So I suppose depending on how the result goes, that's the way we'll judge it. Yeah, you could look at it two ways for them. You know, Pierce was probably looking at it as positive in that they're playing games and it's better than training. Obviously the slip side of that then is, you know, maybe picking up knocks and injuries and Maybe if they're relying on boys like Paul Duff and that to pull them out of a hole, you know, you can put in the game carrying knocks and stuff. But, you know, uh, Cully Hanna obviously sitting in weight. Um, it's a big task for the Oaks. But I'm sure Gareth Thornton will have his team well prepared. Um, if you look at Cully Hanna, you see the scores that they're racking up in all the games. Um, they're scoring like 20 points on average each game, um, which is a wee bit um, frightening for any of the teams that have come up against so far. But, you know, I think Pierre Shogues will have to set it up, you know, an ugly set up this weekend in order to deal with Cully Hanna. There's no other way around that. Um, and seeking to take the game down the stretch into the last five minutes because, you know, realistically, Cully Hanna haven't been tested in any other game so far. And um, Pierre Shogues will be looking at that and try to take it down the stretch in the last five minutes to seeking to ask them questions that, you know, sympathetics haven't been asked um, already this year. And is that a, is that a disadvantage nearly, Barry, for Cully Hanna? Because we know the strength in their team. We've all seen the programme. We've, we've named all the players um, over the last few weeks. Like, they haven't been tested, but they're playing well. So is, it's probably a 50-50 a split of what way you want to call it. But heading into the championship semi-final, is that a big concern that they haven't really been tested yet? Um, Maybe for their management team slightly, but he will only know his players himself. And he's probably seeing them racking up these scores and playing as well as they are. Talking to a few of the fellas I know well from Cully Hanna, he says, yes, we can only beat what's put in front of us. But, you know, in terms of playing well, they're actually, you know, knitting together nicely as a team, you know. Obviously, you talked about their strength and depth. Um, that is the problem that Pierre Shogues face, you know, who the, who the matchup's going to be here, you know. Obviously, they've got the three county men. They all need to be picked up, but the strength and depth that um, St. Patrick's have with Tony Donnelly and Nicky Murray and, you know, Shea Hoey and Keelan Reavy and all these boys, they are going to need um, occupied too. So, you know, I think Pierre Shogs are going to have to set it up in a way that's going to make it very um, mucky and ugly to look at. But, you know, hopefully then maybe they can get it outside 
or counter attack and be able to pick um Cully Hanna off out the other end. Um, I suppose I have to be very clinical in that regard, you know. That that is the big thing, boy, when you're facing Cully Hanna, isn't it? Like I would say, just sort of guessing matchups here. Sean Sutton, maybe I think he usually picks up Aiden Nugent. Um, possibly Aiden Harney will go over to Jason Duffy or something. But like you just listed a. Maybe eight names there. You've Ross McQuillan playing deeper that you have to mark. You know, Tony Donnelly coming back. I think he's at wing half back at the minute, so you have to watch him coming. Hoey Reavy, like there's just there's so many names that you can't man mark them all. So possibly what you're suggesting there, that's the way they always have to go. You're gonna just have to shut down that space in the forward line and, and play on the counter. Yeah, I think that, you know, for most teams, particularly intermediate, I know some the the O's are coming down from senior, but they're, you know, obviously an intermediate for a reason. Um they would have one or two man markers that they're, you know, obviously they're the go-to men to pick up. But the problem is seeing that for teams like Darian Oost that played Cully Hanna last week, they, you might lock down one or two, but then the other men coming from everywhere. And that's the big problem that teams at intermediate, particularly at intermediate level, have that they don't have men to man up on, you know, their star players. I suppose for the Oaks, um, the big thing is, I know from the lock Darian Oost game that you just mentioned, um, Cully Hunter really pressed their kickouts. They put a wall of huge men like Phelan Savage, Duffy, um, Alexa Barry McConville, all around that middle of the field. So the the pace show kickout, I'm assuming, from that Dynast game that Cully Hunter are going to go after it again. They're going to press up and put that wall of bodies across the middle. Like that, that's very hard to break down, Barry, isn't it? Particularly without Connor McNichol, who who's out injured, he got injured the first day in the tones. So they're going to rely maybe on the likes Anto Duffy and uh, Vinnie Brady and them boys around the middle. Yeah, well, kickouts have become such a big thing in the modern game that, you know, if you can't get your kick- kickouts away, you're on the pressure straight away. Like, um, obviously, the O's have it, you know, t- this taught out and in some way of counteracting that. But it's amazing how a game can get away from you very quickly. If you're not getting out after 10 minutes and there's a constant wave of stuff coming back and you're going to struggle. It's the same. It's the flip question then on the other end for the Cully Holly kickouts, the nearly sit back, let, get into your defensive shape because you're maybe not going to win the midfield battle and set up. So you give Cully Hanna the ball and let them back in. They have to break you down. Mm, yeah, I would, I would say, yeah. they would have, you, you're, you're, If you're leaving it open at all for these boys, they're going to cut you in two. So, yeah, yeah. yeah Pierre Shogues have to be looking at it from the yard to keep it as tight as possible and take it down the stretch where they can ask them questions that maybe they haven't been asked this year. Yeah, they'll be looking, I would say, they'll be looking to the likes of uh, Che Freeman, who was on our, our team of the week there last week. Rory Duffy, a good scorer as well. Paul Duffy, obviously. They're going to look to the boys to really carry the attack and threat, but it's going to be defensively. That's that's where the game's going to be won and lost. So, I suppose, Barry, how do you see this one panning out? Who do you see making it through to the final? Well, you know, from the outset, as, as I said previously, you know, um, Cully Hanna, would have been most people's favourites to get through, and I, I, you know, I still can't see anything other than a St. Patrick's win here. Um, obviously, the O's will have something to say about that, and they maybe use that as motivation. But you just have to look at the strength and depth in their panel. Um, they have options coming from everywhere, and it's just going to be very hard for any team in this um, intermediate championship to stay with them. I think. Yeah, I, I go with that boy. I think Cully Hanna, they're just they're they're too good at the minute. Like it just yeah. it just feels like that. I don't know, having Ballymagal played them in the first round of the championship last year. I think we only beat them by four points, but they've maybe five or six players that didn't play that day. Back, McQuillan didn't play, Barry McConville, Don Lee, Murray, Sean Connell. So they've a, they've a bunch of players back that didn't play in the senior championship last year. So I think they'll get over the Oaks and then make their way to the final. Um, it's just about who else makes it there. Obviously on Sunday then, Katie and St Paul's. Um, this is before the Madden and Cross game on Sunday. This is at three o'clock. So I suppose Katie are probably the surprise package here, Barry, having been in um Division Two B, having won it, obviously they'll be in Division Two A next year. But um they've put together a really good run of league form, carried that through to the championship. I think they got two draws maybe in the in the group stages and a win, a big playoff victory then over Tiernan Oog and they're through to the semi finals now. So for Katie, it's been a, a brilliant season for them. Yeah, you only have to flip it back to this side that time last year where, you know, they probably won result from going down to the junior, you know. So, it's, um, I suppose Simon McGeary and his coaching team has deserves great credit for the turnaround that's happened here. Um, they've went through, they've only lost two games all year. They've went through, you know, obviously the championship unbeaten as well. So, you know, that can be a big plus for them going into this game in that they're winning games. And, you know, 
um, that can you know really make a difference for them. They're, obviously, their confidence, the good balance across the team, they're strong defensively, big round in the middle, and then they have um, forwards who can occupy up front. So, yeah, this could be a dangerous enough game for St. Paul's, I think, with the confidence that Katie have coming into this game. And confidence, momentum, everything. And I suppose a young team, Barry, they always say that the young team is no fear. They, they don't, they're, whether it's naivety or whatever it is, or confidence. But a young team is no fear. They're going into the game, focusing on themselves, and they'll give this a real rattle. Yeah, they, will, they know no different, you know. And I suppose it's been a while since Katie had been at this end of the competition. Obviously, they'd be kind of a sleeping giant and would see themselves as more of a senior club than in an intermediate. But, you know, um, yeah, I think Katie can really, you know, turn a few heads this weekend in this game. Obviously, you know, they're playing against some Pauls who have been around this end of the competition, particularly in the media for a number of years, and were, you know, high ball into the square from winning it last year. Like, you know, so that'll be their motivation going into this this year. Can they go one step further? Um, and then I suppose the added spice of this game is, is Ronan Clark managing some Pauls who managed Katie last year. So, you know, he'll have... Uh, you know, obviously, lots of knowledge on what's going on in Kiri, who he might match up, maybe where where he might feel that he, he can expose, you know, so that, that that's, I suppose, adds further space to this game this weekend. I think it's worth, probably worth mentioning to Ronan Clark and Simon McGeary worked with each other as well during the county minor days under Kier McKeever, so they would know each other inside out as well. So that, that's an interesting dynamic for isn't it? Because what, some Pauls are probably already the favourites. Ronan knows all the Katie boys. He knows their strengths and weaknesses in terms of, as you mentioned, matchups and all. Like it, it gives him a good in, insight and maybe a bit of a head start when he's planning um, this weekend. Yeah, I suppose you can look at it two ways. Yeah, he he knows everything, but sometimes you can you can overload the boys with information. I'm sure Clarky will know not to do that. You know, just about pick out one or two things that maybe he can he can maybe exposed in the, in the Katie defensive setup or whatever. But I'm sure on the flip side of that, same McGeer, he's looking at the same way, you know, how can they counteract, you know, the threat of morning inside? How can they, you know, deal with high balls going in? The, you know, is there somebody going to be fit to mark morning? Um, can they close the ball from further out the field? You know, all these things uh, make it an interesting matchup. I think the, the we talk when we talk about some balls, you have to talk about Andrew Mernon. We've done that in the podcast for whatever the last couple of years when we're talking about some balls and, there's county players that, that struggle to get the grips on Andrew Mernon. So for an yeah, well, club full back marking him, it's just it's a tough ask, isn't it? It's a big ask. Like as you've seen this year with our man himself and um Aiden Forker, like when they get all star nominations, there was no no fluke this year. They were standout players for our man. But as you say, like you know, players around Ireland can't mark Mernon inside when that ball's coming across, like you know, so it's gonna be difficult for Katie. You know, but they know that. How can they limit? They're obviously not going to totally prevent them from, you know, having an impact on the game. But how can they limit the impact that he has in the game? How can they limit the amount of ball going in, say, tomorrow and what he can actually cause havoc? You know, you know that's where they'll have their homework done and then they'll try to negate that, obviously, um, on come Sunday. I think that's the big thing, isn't it? It's just that pressure around the middle of the field. And obviously, Katie will have a marker on Mernon. It's having a sweeper in front of him, but... It's stopping the ball coming in is, is the only way to stop Martin, isn't it? It is, yeah. You know, from from experience playing against Andy, you know, with my own club, you know, he could be out of the game for long stages, but all it takes is one ball into the back post and then all of a sudden it's in the net and then the game turns around, you know. And Katie be well aware of that. Um, and I suppose looking from a personal perspective in terms of Martin this week getting an All-Star nomination, you know, we probably want to go out and, you know, rubber stamp that but showing us his true strengths out in the athletic grounds this weekend because, you know, he's back there for his club and I suppose where he wants to play the most, you know, and Shane the most. So, yeah, the, um, he, he's going to need watch come the weekend. I suppose for, for Katie, they carry their own attack and stuff too. James O'Hara has been probably one of the stars of the, the intermediate chapter so far and I haven't seen Katie live yet, so I'm looking forward to getting to seeing James and um, seeing him in the athletic grounds. But the, to have a player like that boy that's consistently putting up you know, seven or eight points a, a game and, you know, you have a forward that you can just give the ball to, you have a reliable free taker in him as well. Like, that, that's a big boost for a team, isn't it? But yeah, it's a particularly big boost for a team like Katie that's maybe relying on a good free taker or whatever, but yes, from experience this year with Young O'Hara, yeah, he has been, he, he's got, he has been probably the player of the league in the championship for from a Katie perspective, anyhow, um, and he's going to need watched from a St. Paul's end, Um he obviously carries a threat. He's late. He runs with the ball, but he's very, very accurate. 
Um, but he's not in his own now, Katie. We have a good balance in the forward lane. They have a lot of good footballers, and you know that's why I think they won't be far away here this weekend. And the thing always with Katie, we we're talking about the Oaks playing week on week. Katie play week on week, obviously with the hurling on the football. So they're hurt through to the hurling final. They're um they've a, a few joint players, or dual players. You know the likes of Thomas Galvin, Shay Harvey, boys like that, Owen Fullerton are playing both codes. So. Um, as we've seen it maybe with the likes of Deny there, even in Antrim and, and different clubs, when you're a dual club and, and you're winning by like, the momentum winning in the football is good, but when you're winning week on week, hurling on football, getting through the championship final, like that, that can only be a good thing. Yeah, well, you know, it's the positivity around the place, and you know, every week you're going, there's a buzz about the place, and I suppose you know, it's that, that you know, it's that success breeds success, and that winning mentality, and you know, you just don't know how to lose, you know, as we talked about previously. They drew two games in the group stage, you know, but they were against good teams, good solid teams in Colorville who weren't that far away in the championship this year either. And then obviously come through in a really tight game against Tierra Nova. And it's hard to beat coming through, you know, t- really tight games like that. It really strengthens the team, galvanizes the team. And, um, you know, it'll be interesting to see um, what way they fix that this weekend. Yeah, I think, I think both teams come through. You mentioned Katie and um, Porter Down. I think that was extra time Katie won it. And then St. Paul's. I think they were 10 points up again, Cullerville at half time, but it was that atrocious day of the, the storm yep. and, and everything. So Cullerville come back in it and St. Paul's just edged out by a point. But I suppose having these really tough games, we spoke about Cully Hanna maybe having it too easy leading into the semi final. But when you're coming through them tight games, Barry, for both St. Paul's and Katie, like the, the inside the group, inside that changing room, you know, you've been through hell to get here. Like, so that can, that can yep. be a big momentum too, can't it? Yeah, well, we, you know, getting to the semi final of the championship, they're all going to be good teams in this at this stage of the championship. So, you know, um, and they've all going to have to come through, you know, picks and troughs throughout the year to get to this stage. Um, but yeah, I suppose it, it's it's really open this weekend in terms of you know who's going to go through. Who 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 do you think? You know, some people might have their favourites, other people might have their dark horses to come through. Yeah, but you know, it'll be interesting to see this weekend. And how do you see this one going by? I'm getting a sense from you that you don't see yeah, it. Yeah, it's not easy to call. <laughs> Sean, again, it's the whole success thing. You're talking about the hurlers, the whole club as a whole. You know, yeah, I just have a we sneak in suspicion for maybe an upset this weekend. Um, I know the whole Ronan Clark thing involved in this as well, but I, just something about Katie this year, yeah, a wee bit of confidence. I wouldn't be surprised if they win. I'll go with the obvious final of Cully Hall and St Paul's. I think that was the, the two pick the two easy ones to pick out, so I'll go with them too. But yeah, four really exciting semi finals to look forward to this weekend, both in the intermediate and the senior. Two double headers in the athletic rounds on Saturday and Sunday. And of course anybody can't reach these games, they'll be live on Arma TV. And we'll be back on Sunday evening, hopefully, or if not Monday with an our podcast. We'll have a, a few talking heads and a few interviews as well thrown in about the, the uh, for both grades so just before we finish thank you to Capture Athletic for coming on board as our podcast sponsor for the year thanks to Stephen Cusick for j- jumping on and talking about the senior championship and thanks very much to you Barry for coming on and giving us your thoughts on the intermediate and we'll hopefully have four big games to look forward to this weekend Barry, you're very welcome on to the podcast. We have 